So we already know the iPhone 11 Pro has got a fantastic camera, but is it a fantastic video camera? Well, to find out, I challenged Charlie Rose of Carfection to see whether it's possible to make a fully cinematic film using just the phone. Um, I think it went pretty well on the shoot day, don't you think? I think it did. I think we got everything we needed. Yeah, Almost okay. Almost ran out of time, but... It was a long day. We started early in um, uh, the New Forest yes. down in the south of England. Yeah, we had we quite a nice day for it. Yeah. Um, so I'll start by asking, overall, how did you find using the phone? Um, it was pr pretty impressive, actually. I've got to say, like, it's the first time I've really I've had my hands on the new iPhone 11 Pro. And the three cameras were obviously amazing. You've, yeah. there's, there's, you've got a lot of versatility in there. It gives you lots of options. Yeah, you lots of options. It was, it was kind of tricky because I'm not used to shooting on something so small. Mm -hmm. I'm used to, you know, a, a lot bigger cameras or you, DSLRs. Yeah, so for you example. use a lot of very expensive kit, so yeah. things like your Panasonic GH5s and yeah. Sony so, cameras. Yeah. What would be, I mean, what 10, 20k of equipment on location? Yeah. So, so just slimming it down to just a phone in your pocket is. Uh, Dan's has in quite a lot, but this wasn't the only hardware you used, was it? There were some extras that. Yeah, had. yeah. So we we just sw swapped out the cameras, basically. No professional lenses or um, cameras. We just had the iPhone 11 Pro, and we had some some lenses. You have to remind me of the brand. Yeah, name. Moment. moment. So lenses. yeah, Moment. We've got the case on at the Moment. And moment basically make these lenses that you just snap onto the front of the iPhone give you different focal lengths, so they also do filters, uh, yeah. like circular polarizers, which are quite important in uh, in car photography. Um, but then you did use your sliders, sliders and tripods. tripods, a gimbal we used yeah. as well. Um, and so you gave it a fighting chance to get yeah. the best quality. I had to quality. Sort of make a little rig to centre the lens on the tripod, because it's always a bit difficult if you're shooting and your, your lens is off-centred to the middle of the tripod. Okay. So I, I, I don't know, we'll see in the behind the scenes footage, I made that little rig with a handle on it. Just and to like, have it everything centred yeah, over the middle. over the middle of the tripod. So that's something I wouldn't have even considered would have been a problem. So that, yeah, that's interesting. That frustrates me a lot if you're off centered in your <laughs> Yeah. So hard hardware wise, what was a what was the biggest problem for you? Because what you it's said to, to me say. was really so, interesting in that you didn't have control of aperture. Yeah, so I mean that comes more down to the usability of the app and the phone itself. I'm mm. I'm used to having buttons for everything, so white balance for example, or mm. using the focus wheel to change the focus, but You've just got a touch screen yeah, on, so everything on the you've iPhone, got to... so you've just got it in in the app, and it's, it does get really quite quite fiddly doing mm. that. But um, I imagine that's difficult when you've got, say, a low angle, and then you've got to get down to exactly. look at the phone, so and if it's to... bright, you can't see properly. Then yeah. yeah, and we tried using another iPhone to display the controls yeah. um, to sort of mirror the feed of the app, but it, the lag was too much. It yeah. was, so software-wise, you were using Filmic Pro, which is one of, I think, probably the main like cinematic, the professionals app for video yeah. production. How do you find working with that? It's it's impressive. The the fact that in an iPhone now that app will give you the, give you the ability to change all your settings independently. So ISO, aperture, um, manual focusing, uh, white balance is is amazing. Yeah. Um, I never would have expected to be able to do that kind of stuff on an iPhone, but it is quite fiddly yeah. in its controls. You also had a few problems with it, I believe, I which yes. interrupted the workflow. What what happened? We were what was it? We were every time we were filming um, and we were using the the sort of dual control. So yeah. we had the because we placed the camera in such a way where you can't actually reach the screen. So if it's on a suction mount against the windscreen, you can't reach around and change the settings. So we're using a, a phone to change the settings. Mm -hmm. And every time we tried to change the ISO, it would crash the right. whole app. And then when you restart, only a few settings seem to stay the same when, when you restart the app. So and, and some of them had changed. Yeah, white balance had changed. So that happened about six times. Wow, OK. And then if you forget to change the white balance back, then you know that could mess up your, yeah. your footage. Yeah. That might not seem like a big deal, but on these shoots, you can have a very limited time. When I know that when I've been on shoots with you, um, I remember when we shot the Bugatti Chiron, for example, we only had the car for a few hours to do that. And yeah. if you start getting those errors where things 
suddenly need a lot more time and effort to sort out, then that's yeah. really going to put a delay on your day yeah, yeah. and it can completely ruin a film. It means that you don't come away with the shots that you want. So I get that that's important. Um, but once we'd kind of got over those and you had a look at the footage, what what's your general feeling now you've kind of spent some time in, in post looking at what you've shot? I'm a bit divided over the footage. In the in great lighting, like daylight on the car, it looked amazing. You could almost you wouldn't be able to tell on some of the wider shots that it was shot on an iPhone. So the car to car footage for example, mm. like the way the sky came out, the dynamic range was incredible. But as soon as we started getting a bit closer in the details and the shadows, then you've got all this processing and like big Noisy. Mm, you can you can you can see that noise. Like, yeah, it's almost like twinkling away in the shadows. Yeah, um, which is frustrating. But so not a not an outright failure by any by any means. No, and also you're not going to get the depth of field you would with a, a big sensor. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a, a big giveaway that it's shot on an iPhone. It's quite hard to get that cinematic look. I think that's yeah, what people yeah. associate depth of field with. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, overall it's. It's pretty impressive for a phone. I suppose the question is then, do you, if you had the iPhone 11 Pro now, would you have that in your pocket, anticipating using it on shoots in the future? Do you think you would actually try and incorporate it into your into your kit? At the moment, I can't see us using it regularly mm -hmm. on a shoot. I see it as a more of a fallback. It definitely can't replace our bigger sensor the cameras that we use. But I mean, that's. I don't think it will ever be able to with something that big unless yeah. they introduce, you know, portrait mode for video or stuff like that. Which is which is already it's, a thing. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, I I see it as a camera that say I've, I've, my cameras are all in the car or something, and then we suddenly like, oh, we really need to get a shot of that, and it's it's in the moment. I would 100% use the yeah. iPhone to grab that shot, and I wouldn't have an issue of using that in the final film. Yeah. It was fun to to try it out, and I actually think a lot of people who are watching it on a smaller screen who can't look at the finer details mm. on like a big TV for example yeah. won't actually notice that it was it was shot on a phone um, I think a lot of people won't see that also the fact that I've been able to process the images in in editing so reduce some of the noise and stabilize some of the footage that was a bit shaky also helps a lot as well mm -hmm. so I think it probably is an accept, uh, a success but we'll have to wait to see what all the comments are like Really, to yeah, maybe I think uh, it's all going to come down to the comments and how this is uh, how this is received. Yeah. But so I think if we're going to come to any conclusion here, it's that this phone by itself cannot replace all of your actual pro gear, which I suppose is not much of a surprise. But I guess it is good to see how close it's come. And I suppose for people with less exacting standards than you guys of your multi-award winning. <laughs> quality oh, films please. then um, you know I'm sure it will work really well but this will probably be decided by the audience so do make sure to head over to Carfection and take a look at that video and leave your thoughts on whether or not this is a good looking video in the comments below their film and don't forget to keep your eye on CNET.com for lots more around the iPhone.